Since it first hit the air in 1963, Doctor Who has pulled out some of the greatest episode endings in British TV history. The size and scope of a show about the entirety of time and space means that literally anything can happen to the Doctor and their companions, which has led to some truly memorable cliffhangers over the years. Drastic decisions, mind-blowing plot twists, events totally changing out of left field, it's all happened in Doctor Who. So we've rounded up 10 endings that left viewers wondering what the hell they just witnessed. Usually Usually in a good way, but not always. I'm Jess from What Culture, and here are 10 Doctor Who endings nobody saw coming. Number 10. The Time of Angels the Weeping Angels was still new and exciting when this episode rolled around. Before their creator Stephen Moffat diluted their effectiveness, the Angels were a force to be reckoned with, and had the 11th Doctor and his friends cornered underground with seemingly nowhere to run. After some back and forth with the strangely charismatic Angel Bob, the Doctor announces that his enemies have made a huge mistake by placing him in a trap. He then grabs a pistol and shoots the gravity globe that had been illuminating the cave. It's not the greatest cliffhanger in the world, so why does this episode appear on the list? Well, because the Doctor used a gun. Fans had been repeatedly told that the Doctor hated all weapons, especially guns, always opting for the peaceful solution to any conflict. To see Matt Smith's incarnation of the character wield one so freely, and so early in his lifespan, was more than a little jarring. While he didn't fire it at a living creature, the juxtaposition of the universe's peacekeeper holding a firearm was enough to leave fans going, and all together now, what? Number 9. The Dominators Part 5 this second Doctor serial pitted the Time Lord against the titular race, known for their use of nuclear radiation to power their technology. The Dominators planned to destroy the peaceful planet of Dulcus and use its remains as fuel, something that the Doctor inevitably doesn't take kindly to. In fact, he takes so unkindly to it that he decides to obliterate them all with a nuclear weapon. In the serial's final episode, the evil aliens attempt to blow up Dulcus using small atomic bombs called seeds. However, the Doctor manages to stop the seeds from from entering the planet's core, and smuggles one back aboard the Dominator's ship. The episode ends with the TARDIS flying away from a huge nuclear explosion that presumably killed every single Dominator on board. This level of rampant destruction is not something that modern fans would associate with the Doctor. Even at the time, this would have been considered a little over the top, especially with the real-world threat of nuclear devices looming large. Number 8. Last of the Time Lords Last of the Time Lords served not only as the climax to New Who Series 3, but also as the last regular appearance of companion Martha Jones. She bids the Doctor goodbye at the end of this episode, leaving number 10 alone once again. Poor fella. However, he has no time to mope around because the bow of a ship called Titanic crashes through the walls of the TARDIS. The Doctor's expression of bewilderment says it all. He even says what right after this happens. The collision of worlds was to set up the Christmas special Voyage of the Damned, which saw the Doctor team up with Kylie Minogue to escape a doomed space liner also named Titanic. You'd think they would have learned from the first time. It's safe to say that nobody had crashes into the Titanic on their Doctor Who bingo card that year, but this bizarre ending helped cut through the sadness of losing Martha and created much intrigue for the upcoming holiday episode. Number 7. The Doctor's Daughter Sticking with Ten now, and that time he met his daughter, who would go on to become his wife, who's actually the daughter of himself. Yeah, look, this episode gets weird when you get meta with it. The Doctor's daughter takes place on a planet where human beings use cloning to provide soldiers for their war against the Hearth. When the Doctor is cloned upon arrival, we get Jenny, his daughter, who's played by Georgia Moffat, Fifth Doctor Peter Davison's real-life daughter, and David Tennant's real-life wife. Again, meta. After growing attached to Jenny across the episode, the Doctor is devastated stated when she takes a bullet for him and dies from her injuries. However, after he leaves the planet, Jenny is brought back to life via the mystical power of the source. Fans assumed that Jenny was a one-off character, nothing more than a plot device to teach the Doctor some lessons about parenthood. Seeing her get revived and then jet off into space on her own adventures was pretty surprising and left viewers hoping for further interactions with Jenny in the future. It's just a shame we haven't seen her on TV since this episode aired in 2008. Number 6. Vengeance on Varos Part 1 Although Colin Baker was far from the only guilty party in Doctor Who's first major decline, his detractors got some catharsis in Vengeance on Varus's first episode. While searching for a valuable mineral to repair the TARDIS with, the Doctor and his companion Perry are held captive by the governor of the planet Varus. The Doctor manages to escape, but ends up stranded in a desert and begins to die of thirst. At least, that's what we're led to believe. On Varus, public torture and executions are viewed as a form of entertainment. Think 
big brother, but way worse. Actually, not that much worse. The doctor is only hallucinating the desert due to the effects of a structure called the Punishment Dome, with his struggles being broadcast across the planet. When the governor orders the transmission be cut, the credits on the actual episode begin to roll. A clever ending that would have fit perfectly into the meta-focused world of today, this episode must have blown everyone's minds when it first premiered in the 80s. Number 5. The Almost People The actual plotline of Series 6's The Rebel Flash slash The Almost People is so inconsequential that we're not even going to bother recapping it. All you need to know is that after defeating a group of rogue human duplicates working in an acid factory, the Doctor reveals that Amy Pond is actually a duplicate of herself. The episode then cuts to the real Amy, who's trapped in a pristine white room. Oh, and she's also pregnant. She's confronted by a lady with an eye patch who tells her that she's about to give birth. The episode then goes off the air with Amy screaming through the pains of labor. At the same time, across the country, millions of people watching Doctor Who all came down with a serious case of plot whiplash. This ending threw a huge curveball at the audience who were expecting just the conclusion to the two-part storyline. Instead, the episode completely bulldozed through that plot and set in motion a chain of events that would affect the entire rest of the series. Number 4. The Name of the Doctor 2013's The Name of the Doctor begins with the Doctor and Clara hunting down a being called the Great Intelligence, which has captured their friends Madame Vastra, Jenny Flint, and Strax. The Intelligence, played by Richard E. Grant, wants to go back in time and undo all of the good work the Doctor has done, and so Clara and the Doctor enter his time stream to protect it from the Intelligence. In doing so, they come across a shadowy figure lurking in the depths of the Doctor's memories. This figure is the Doctor, but he's also not. He's a man who did awful things during the Time War in order to save the universe. He is the War Doctor. Stood there was the unmissable figure of John Hurt, portraying the Doctor's greatest secret. His story was fleshed out in the 50th anniversary special, The Day of the Doctor, but at this point, viewers were as baffled by Hurt's arrival as they were captivated. Even hardcore Whovians didn't know there was a secret Doctor between 8 and 9, and that's because Moffat had only just made him up. Still, this was one of the biggest bombshells in the show's history. Number 3. The Daleks There's no greater or more recognizable Doctor Who villain than those lovable, plunger-wielding tin cans, the Daleks. Straight from the planet Skaro, the Daleks stand for everything the Doctor opposes – war, subjugation, apathy, and hatred. Their iconic design has become a symbol of the show all over the world, and their catchphrase of exterminate is now part of TV lexicon. The Daleks' first appearance came at a first Doctor serial from 1963 and 64, called, well, the Daleks. The first episode of the serial ends with companion Barbara being accosted by a Dalek in what has been described as one of the series' best ever cliffhangers. The Daleks were a revolution, and there is tangible evidence that their appearance led to a spike of interest in the show. They have remained a fixture of Doctor Who for over half a century, and all of their incredible storylines and moments can be traced back to this shocking ending. Number 2. The Caves of Androzani, Part 4 at the end of the 1984 serial, The Caves of Androzani, the fifth Doctor succumbs to an illness caused by a toxin. After hallucinating the faces of his past companions, the Doctor regenerates into a new form, swapping out the visage of Peter Davison for that of Colin Baker. It wasn't just the character's appearance that had changed, something was different about this new Doctor, and something felt a little off. His first line in the role, you were expecting someone else, was delivered with a biting sarcasm that felt very out of place with the bubbly eccentric doctors of old. This harsher portrayal of the character lasted less than three years, but the initial introduction of this more serious version of the Doctor is something that fans are still grappling with to this day. Number 1. The Stolen Earth between this, his actual regeneration, and his appearance as the 14th Doctor, David Tennant really loves shooting bright lights out of his hands and face, doesn't he? Back when he was the 10th Doctor, Tennant's era on the show looked like it was coming to a premature end, when he got himself shot by a Dalek in the Stolen Earth. Moments after seeing Rose for the first time since she departed the TARDIS, the Doctor suffered this seemingly fatal wound, and had to be ushered back to his blue box by Rose, Donna, and Captain Jack. As his companions fret around him, the Doctor's hands begin to glow that familiar orange-yellow hue. He then gets to his feet and unleashes a salvo of energy, beginning the process of changing his face. There had been no news of Tennant leaving the show when this episode aired, so fans were left completely aghast when they saw their hero regenerate. Were they really going to replace him without warning? And if not, how would they get around the fact that he'd already begun regenerating? The answer would come in the next episode of the show, but that week was a very long one for Doctor Who fans. That's the end of our list, but let me know down in that comment section 
section which Doctor Who endings you did not see coming and which ones are your favorites. As always, I've been Jess from What Culture. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. If you like, you can come say hi to me on my Twitter account where I'm at Jess McDonald. But make sure you stay tuned to us here for plenty more great lists.